Hello YouTube, what's going on? Shane 2K here, and today I'm bringing a very special guest. He's an actor, a singer, and a avid spoon DJ, Tyler Copeland. How you doing today, Tyler? What's going on, Shane? How you doing? I'm doing good. Can't complain. How do you feel about, like, how spoon is currently? Because a lot of my viewers don't know what spoon is at all. So, like, what would, how would you describe spoon to them? Okay, so I, I was having a conversation with a friend of mine uh, earlier today. Uh, about the spoon, and the way that I described it, I was like, it's kind of like Twitch, except that there's no video, and there's a lot of performing arts people on there, singers, songwriters, actors, Broadway people, uh, and just a sorted lot of uh, very interesting levels of community, and I don't know, it's that's probably the best way that I could do it, like explain Spoon, like it's just on your phone, but you can also listen to it on your computer, everything like that, like. I don't know. It's it's a very interesting social media platform. Yeah, I liked the entire... I like how they're doing their ads with, like, it's... The the one I got six weeks ago now, it said it was radio without the... Or it was current day radio. They're bringing radio back, and I thought that was the cool part. They, yeah. For some reason, my ad said something about sports, so I was into it. You go on the app... There's not one, so any of my sports fans listening, which is what my channel is, don't be ready for there to be sports casts yet. I, I can't wait for that day to come, but they're not there yet. But um, You could be the trendsetter, bud. It's like, I, I think I have to get bigger first and then be a trendsetter with that, because that's definitely something I yep. want to do. But yeah, if no one, I go into sports streams, like you select the category and I'm like, hey, what are we talking about? They're like, not sports. I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> Yeah, that's one thing that's that's kind of uh, interesting about Spoon is like most people are and uh, are are not really using the tags properly, but that's that's not that's not that's not Spoon's fault. That's just people in the community oh, not knowing yeah. what the hell they're doing. I mean, like half the time, I'll just put mine as astrology, just because no one's there, and I think it's funny. <laughs> yeah. I, if if one day astrology streams blow up, I started that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the way to do it, man. Um, but do you think the only reason Spoon's starting to get way bigger, I mean, this is what I think, that's why I made the question, would be because of quarantine and because none of us have, like, a regular day-to-day -day basis job and stuff like that? I think like that? so, and, yeah, uh, you know, I, we've been talking, I've been talking with a couple of the, the bigger streamers on the platform, and, yeah, it was always one of those things that, while we were in the thick of it, we were wondering what it was going to look like once quarantine was over, um, and at least for me, I know because I'm kind of phasing back into work right now. Uh, and this is uh, mid-May right now uh, at the time of recording. And so, you know, I'm just kind of phasing back into work and, you know, my time on Spoon now. I mean, I still do get to do what I was doing on Spoon before, but it's just less of it. Like, I'm not on it 24-7. I'm not always on a stream. Like, you yeah. know, I've been bouncing around a little bit more because back back a month and a half ago pretty much everybody on the app there's been there's been like three waves of people come through and i was i think i was on the first second wave i was on the second wave of people that that came into the app and you know i think that's how i, I got as at least mildly popular as i am just because i was around for all like the big streamers right now for their growth period you know i've kind of been in and around all these streamers for a while now and so that's how everybody knows my name. I'm not necessarily a, uh, a really active uh, spooner, streamer, you know, but I'm more of the performer type. But, um, you know, I think it'll be interesting to see the way this app kind of moves to operate once people get back nine to five jobs, you know, or just working in general. I think a lot of teenagers are going to start to take it over because we're actually kind of lucky if quarantine does break june or even potentially end of may but beginning of june we're gonna that be really no lucky school. exactly no school i think teenagers are gonna start to dominate the app and like the big streamers yeah they'll get uh, their yeah, shot I don't think so. yeah I don't, I, mean, I, don't, I don't i don't think so i still think there's i mean right now your average age is uh between i think it's 15 and uh 15 and 20 right now yeah is the is the average age of the user on spoon I'm I'm one of the one of the older people. I'm me being like you know 20, 24, 25. Um, you know, it's just I'm one of the the older people. 
Yeah, I mean, I know Weeds is like 29, which seems ancient he's, for this yeah, era. He's 29. Yeah, but um, how do you feel about... I'm going to send this to Weeds, so I'd be careful your answer. How do you feel about the Weeds and Luna relationship? So, Weeds is my bro. Always been my bro. He's been my bro for a while. Um, I want him to take it seriously, and I know that I know that it's clout generating for them, and you know I, I'm, I, I want them to be happy. So I don't I don't want to see I don't want to let Spoon get in the way of you know a potential relationship there, and I just think they need to stay cognizant of that, you know, and continue to communicate effectively and you know meet up at some point um yeah it's pretty much all i gotta say on that i'm not gonna i'm not gonna speak for him on that i don't i don't blame you that was a that was one of those um cutthroat questions i just wanted to ask you something a little controversial well well articulate I, I try to be i try to be well articulated questions like that oh you're definitely you're definitely very well spoken you're very very on your feet so yeah i mean i give you credit some people would have went on a tan like it, uh, imagine i got squiggle uh, on here uh <laughs> But you brought up how you're more of a performer. What would you say about acting and performing was like your favorite and what drew you into it at first? So, performing arts. Let me just sit back in my chair right quick. Um, <laughs> so you're talking about performing in general, like in, in terms of my, my life decision to actually pursue it. Yeah. Okay. So, ever since I was a young kid, um, I've always had, music has always been a part of my life, and doing things with music has always been one of those passions of mine. Um, starting at age like four or five with bongos in the back of my Ford Taurus, my mom in the front seat, you know, she threw bongos at me and said, play to this music. And, you know, I did. And started there, and then in high school, I started really learning how to play the drums. Um, or just before high school, I started self-teaching myself how to play drums. Um, took some lessons here and there, and then in high school I got really serious about it, joined the drum line, and I was lucky enough to be in one of the most competitive drum lines uh, in the nation, uh, in, well, in South Carolina first, and then in the nation, um, with some of the more uh, indoor uh, drum line stuff, which that's a whole that's a whole other thing, but the indoor drum line thing really pushed me to be a performer. It wasn't just playing drums i mean if you ever you know get curious it's winter garden or national indoor percussion wgi sport of the arts it's indoor drum line it's literally sprinting around a basketball court with with drums and playing and acting and you know moting and um that was one of the things that i enjoyed the most and performing on a on a grand stage like that being because uh, my school, we were actually, uh, my senior year, we were ninth at the World Championships for the division that we were in. So, I mean, you know, we're, we're not first, but, you know, we're we're ninth out of 150 groups. Oh, yeah, that's, so, that's huge. I mean, we're, 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 we're pretty good. We're, we're pretty good. And then, uh, and then when I uh, got out of the military, because I did, I did four years in the United States Army, after I got out of the military, I moved to Orlando, Florida, and I worked at Disney World for a little bit, uh, not as a performer, but I worked in the parking lot, but um, just networking with the performers there and, you know, really trying to get into, you know, having something. I also started school at Full Sail University uh, for music production because it's always been kind of one of the things that I've always wanted to do. Um, and from there, I actually met my current roommate, who is the company manager for a theater here in West Virginia. And she invited me to audition and, you know, I got the part, it's a paid gig. I said, okay. And I moved to West Virginia, which is where, is where I am currently. You know, I had no idea you did any type of service. But first of all, I want to say thank you. I have a lot of family who does, who's been in the service and stuff. So obviously, but um, I'd like to ask, because I mean, this is kind of an impromptu question. What would you say was the biggest thing that shaped you while in the military? Um, probably my ex-wife. Uh, <laughs> um, I, the, the, the thing that I, that I take out of my time in the military service, because I enjoyed, I enjoyed my time in, but I used, I, I went in with the mentality of using it as a stepping stone, not as like a, a lifer or anything like that. Like I wanted to go in, do my job and get out. 
Mm-hmm. Right. And one of the things that, well, my ex-wife is one of them, but the big thing that I, is my work ethic, um, my thought process when it comes to like leadership and, you know, truly being one of those just go after it type of people with initiative and everything like that. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's transferable to the civilian world. So, um, I'd say my ex-wife for what I want relationship wise, because I mean, we we were together for almost four and a half years Mm -hmm. uh, before we separated. And then when we did, and we finally did decide to get divorced, um, you know, I knew what, I knew what I want now versus like most kid, most people my age, most men my age are really unsure and are just acting a fool and, you know, <laughs> not really, not really there. Um, so oh, yeah. you, you put a lot of miles on when you, when you go through stuff like that. Uh-huh. Um, and that's, that's kind of where I am now. I've, most people pin me for like 28, 29, uh, just with how I am articulated and, you know, I carry myself a little bit more professionally than most people in my age group. So, you know, it's just one of those things that you just put a lot of hair in your chest and I, that's probably the one thing that I appreciate most about my military service. Hmm. I'm, le- I'm learning so much about you. Usually I just see you in comments of spoon streams or on the breakfast club streams. <laughs> I, I like this for not, di- yeah. by the way, if you're new to, s- I mean, if you're coming here cause it says spoon in the title or you're here from a, uh, just my subscribers, spoon is the streaming app. You should all go follow Tyler. He goes by Disney Princess Tyler, Drunk Tyler. But, um... I got a couple different names. Yeah, speaking of Breakfast Club, I have to ask, this is not related to Breakfast Club at all, what is your favorite breakfast food? Mm. I'd have to say, by far, it's gotta be hash browns. But not, like, scattered. Oh, okay. It's gotta be, it's gotta be patty hash browns. Okay, I was about to say if it's the scattered ones that are sure. Oh. Cause I make, cause I make, I make those homemade sometimes, and those are just so good. I mean, I can just remember like hash browns from like a school cafeteria. That's or McDonald's. Ugh. Yes. God, yeah. Don't even, me, don't even get me started on that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be here. We'll be here for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> My longest interview is forty-five minutes, and it wasn't meant to go that long. I told him it was gonna be twenty minutes. So. Yeah, I mean, it happens. Yeah. So I have three more questions so let's just say you're falling off a cliff or no yeah you're falling off a cliff but you're surviving like like you find a spot to stay and you're fine but weeds in dakota are dangling (laughs) which one are you gonna save you can only save one Hmm. (laughs) Hmm. it's a good one that's interesting it's a a good one yeah that's a that's a brain that's a brain melter for sure um, cause they both, they both mean, I would say about as equally, um, <laughs> you know, I, I, I'd, I'd have to go with, uh, I'm gonna have to go with weeds. Hey, I, I don't know Dakota that well yet, but I'm, I'm just starting to talk to him. I'm actually maybe getting on yeah. one of the best. No, he's a, he's here. a really cool guy, but I just oh, have yeah. to go with weeds. <laughs> I love how much I've known him longer, we're, and me and him, me and him are a little bit closer than me and Dakota are. Yeah. I, I, I'm just leveling, I'm like, Luna loses weeds if weeds dies, but we all lose Dakota's saxophone, but no, no kidding. <laughs> That's um, a good one. So let's say beer pong to save the planet doubles, uh-huh. you're facing like, I mean, I don't know, but you're facing like the best beer pong players of all time, like, doesn't matter. Sure. Who are you? Who are you gonna pick your partner? It can be anyone on the planet. It doesn't have to be like weeds or anybody. It can be anyone, celebrity, anything, athlete. Well, we're fucked regardless. Well, <laughs> well yes. We're losing that game. We're but, we're taking the L. <laughs> yes. But anyway, who would you pick as your? Like we're taking we're taking the L regardless. I mean. Oh yeah. Uh oh god. Oh, who would I choose to like? Spend the last moments as, as the world gets destroyed. It's like you're playing. That, it's like you're playing aliens and you're like saving the planet almost. But yeah, like no, I, I just go ahead and admit the fact. I mean, I'm a, I'm a decent beer pong player, but like, <laughs> not when not when not when st- like you know not when, not when sticks are that high. <laughs> uh, oh my god. I'd have to. It'd have to probably be like. You know what? 
I'd want it to be weeds. <laughs> you want it to be weeds? <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, really, like, I really don't. I, <laughs> we're taking the L. We're taking the L regardless. We're getting beat, but we're, we'll try. You know, I really, like, pride myself on having questions that stump people. I get, like, one each time that, like, make yeah. them like that. I love doing that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> weeds beer pong save the planet against aliens. I hope I'm gonna send this to him. He probably won't listen to it because he's weeds. But <laughs> if he listens to this, he's gonna, he's gonna have some. I'm such, such a fan. I'm simping for him so hard right now. All right, last question. I end every um question. Usually this goes out to athletes, but I think it will work the same way with you. Let's just say when it's all said and done, 60 years from now, however long from now, what do you want to be the legacy that you leave behind? So, for me, and this is always, I've always kind of thought this way since I was probably, probably, probably about your age. Uh, my whole goal is to positively impact people. Um, I don't care in what way, or if it's just through a gesture, or if it's through an act of kindness, or if it's out of just a performance that I do. Like, if there, if there is a way that I can positively impact someone in someone's life or be like a mentor to somebody or, you know, uh, be kind of the, be kind of the old grandpa sitting on the, sitting on the porch, you know, smoking a pipe going back in my day, <laughs> you know, and like being, being the wise old man that everybody comes to for advice and, you know, uh, this is happening. I don't know. I don't know what to do. Like, I want to be that guy that, you know, I've established myself not only as being a positive figure to look up to, but as also just all the people that I've touched. Like I want to, I want to be able to have that legacy and have them live by that same mantra. I, that's by far. I mean, usually I get young athletes on here or even like some mm -hmm. older athletes. That is by far the best answer I've heard. Like, I'd say, like, community-wise, because some people are just like, oh, I want to buy my mom a house, I want to be known for that guy, I want to be known for the community guy, but that was, like, yeah. such a, such a, like, it's an answer that's not going to be recreated, or if it is, it's going to be, like, more generic. You, I like how you put it. All right, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you want to go follow Tyler, he's the first non-athlete that has been on one of my interviews. He's my seventh interview, so it's special when you're not an athlete to get on here. But, um, yeah, I'm going to put all of your socials down below, but you can say anything you want to just end this, like, 15 20 seconds yeah guys i mean if you guys want to go uh just check the link for uh all of well i only have like two links so um i'm not i'm not that out there I'm, I'm trying but um yeah feel free to also uh hit that um giant red subscribe button be sure to smash that bell so that you get notified when shaney posts uh we'd really appreciate it and we'd also love to have you come over on spoon mm. um We'd love to see you just hanging around, be a part of the community. Um, and uh, we appreciate, I appreciate you guys having me on. Appreciate it. Of course. And that's all, guys. Wash your hands. Stay safe. Peace out.